Newly released video raising questions about the murders of three U.S. Green Berets in Jordan. A Jordanian security guard shooting them dead at a checkpoint. The father of one of these men thinks that Jordan is hiding something about the events that led to his son's death. Joining us now, Brian McEnroe, the father of Staff Sergeant Kevin McEnroe, who was killed that day. Sir, thank you for your time uh, and for your son's service to this country. Um, our, our thoughts and prayers are with you. We can't imagine what you have suffered. And now to go through the initial explanations that you got, this video now tells a different story. What do you think about what happened that day? Well, I think that what happened that day was misrepresented from the very beginning by the Jordanians. Um, for what reasons we're not sure, and I don't know that we ever will be sure, but I, I do know that they continued to advance one false narrative after the other as to what happened that day, and even without the, the benefit of audio, it's very clear if you watch the entire video that uh, those narratives were patently mm -hmm. false, and we can't understand why other than the fact that they must be hiding something. So initially the story was something about the men who apparently lived on this base as part of their assignment there and were known to come and go. They knew these people often at these checkpoints um, that they somehow did not fo follow proper photo protocol there at the gate. And then when it became clear that wasn't the truth, then there was a story about uh, somebody had accidentally fired a gun on the U.S. side. Then the story was that there was a loud noise uh, and that this person got spooked and was trying to defend the base. Does any of that make sense to you? No, not at all. These were professional soldiers, uh, all very experienced. Uh, there, there was no panic involved. The, the initial shooting uh, where my son Kevin and Matt Llewellyn were, were killed uh, was an absolute ambush from point blank range behind a camouflage net uh, with no provocation whatsoever. They, they followed the pro protocols to enter the base and everything was going according to normal. The first vehicle passed through unmolested, and as uh, Kevin's vehicle uh, came alongside the open window to the guardhouse, uh, Marek opened fire with an M16 rifle from six feet away. And, uh, you know, at that particular point in time, uh, those soldiers were not supposed to have magazines in their weapons or uh, rounds in the chamber uh, at that point. So. Uh, it, you can see the guard at the first gate does not flinch, jump, look, or move in any way, shape, or form until you see the smoke and the debris coming from Kevin's vehicle, which is almost passed out of frame in the video. Uh, but he doesn't move or jump, and he didn't hear any loud sounds mm -hmm. uh, until he heard the sound of that M16. Well, uh, the man now convicted of killing your son has been sentenced to life in prison. Here's what the Defense Department is telling us, because, of course, we consider Jordan an ally. This country does. And yet this has created a lot of tensions between the two countries. Uh, the Defense Department saying we are reassured to see the perpetrator brought to justice. We appreciate the access provided to us and to the families of the victims, as well as the expedi expedience and seriousness of the court proceedings consistent with Jordanian law. Despite this tragedy, Jordan remains a strategic partner. So you may now have more given the video about what happened, but I know you're still searching for the why. Any clues? Well, uh, the FBI and Department of Defense investigations have ruled out, um, for the most part, they've ruled out terrorism because they've found no connections at all to any terrorist organizations uh, with the shooter. Um, the other narratives that have been advanced have been proven uh, beyond my doubt or the doubts of the other families that those are false as well. So you're left with very few possibilities. And we believe that he was acting under orders from someone who we don't know. Uh, we're not blaming anyone in particular, but we don't believe he acted alone. I also want to read a statement from one of the other victim's fathers. Uh, Sergeant James Moriarty's father, he says, like the Llewellyns and the McEnroe's, my family very much appreciates what the Army and FBI have done to help us understand what happened. What we do not know is why it happened or when Jordan will be held accountable. Um, we send them more than a, a billion dollars in foreign aid every year. We do have important partnerships with them on critical issues of terrorism and other issues in that region. Um, what would you like to see the U.S. do in this case? Well, uh, you know, the politics of the Middle East and, and the things that happen in the Middle East are 
I guess Byzantine would be the word I would use. And, and it's hard to tell uh, who's your friend and who's your enemy over there. There have been several uh, disturbing stories about things that have transpired in Jordan as it relates to buying oil from ISIS, as it relates to vehicles and weapons and, and other assets that have been sent to Jordan ostensibly to help uh, fight terrorism, and they end up in the hands of the enemy. Um, that's very strange, and it leads me to believe that uh, the Jordanians don't have complete control over their own people as it relates to, you know, uh, their armed forces and so on. So uh, what would I like to see happen? I'd like to see our, uh, our investigators, the FBI and Department of Defense, have access to the shooter without the presence of uh, Jordanian security people in the room so that we can question mm -hmm. this guy and try to determine exactly why he did what he did. Yeah. Um, Brian McEnroe, father of the slain Green Beret, Kevin McEnroe, sir, we again thank you and our prayers and love go out to your family and those of the others who were lost that day as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you.